Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Let's Play episode. We are playing as Silas the Summoner on death mode. Last episode we defeated Golem and Astrum Arius, and now we have a Pixar, and we've got all of our gear ready to go to the Abyss. So let's head over there and start looting up some Scoria. Now that we have our Fathom Swarmer armor, we fall so quickly in the Abyss. Okay, well, let's get mining. It is so nice to get Scoria. This is going to unlock all sorts of good stuff now. Grab as much of it as I can as quickly as possible. With Vein Miner, I don't even need to wait for it. I can just hit it once and run to the next one because I can always use my magnet. Grab it all later. It's like a speed run of mining the abyss. Oh, I should have got all this stuff sooner. Okay, I think I got everything I needed. Yeah, we're good. Now let's teleport. No, too late. Make a whole bunch of these. One of the main things we need is some life alloy. So let's just grab maybe 20 of these. So now we can craft the star tainted generator. It increases max minions by two. Doesn't stack with downgrades, does a 7% increase in minion damage, and minion attacks spawn astral explosions and inflict several debuffs. Sweet. And we can also craft a miracle fruit with life alloy as well, so let's do that. This will permanently increase our max life by 25, changes it to a nice orangey color. I think in like every playthrough I always forget the blood orange, so let's go ahead and craft that as well. I was wondering why the color of my hearts didn't match the miracle fruit and it was looking more like a blood orange so you have to have both of them activated and then now we have the proper color and now we can also craft the scoria armor and we should be able to do this hadal mantle as well this has got some pretty good speed and it gives us five percent increased damage while wearing the hydrothermic armor we're at 80 defense right now and when we put this on we go to 73 the Hydrothermic set bonus is a 40% increase to minion damage and plus two max minions. So that's pretty similar to what we had before. I think it's um, a decent amount more damage though. And then we have the Inferno effect when below 50% life and it summons a Hydrothermic vent to protect you. You emit a blazing explosion when you are hit. Well, that's pretty cool. And we've got this new mantle. I think I still like these wings more. They're pretty fun. So I'm gonna leave those as the vanity. And this is interesting. I didn't realize we could craft the Void of Extinction at this point. But let's go ahead and craft that. That's pretty good. It's no longer cursed and it does 15% increase to all damage. And then we get all sorts of brimstone stuff. So the next thing I wanted to craft is the Resurrection Butterfly. Now that we have Life Alloy. 3,000 though consistently. That's pretty good. The real question is how well do they home in and how consistent are they? So to start things off, I want to go ahead and activate my zerg potions and that way we can get a ton of enemies spawning and we can defeat some of these plague bringers and all sorts of toxic enemies that spawn at the surface now because we'll get these little plague cell canisters and those will allow us to spawn the plague bringer goliath which i am pretty scared of it's a very difficult boss i consider it one of the hardest bosses of hard mode Although, it just depends on your class. Maybe it's going to be easier as a summoner, so we'll just have to see. It looks like there's some plague armor that we can do. Oh, we can do a Martian invasion. Oh, it died before it could get away. We'll do a Martian invasion later. And it looks like if we get the Psycho Knife, we can do this knife right here, which is really good. Apparently, when it hits a boss, you gain various boosts and cripple the enemy. So we'll definitely want to craft that. It's very similar to like our Lunic Eye and all that. So the other thing is the Wither Blossom Staff. We need Plague Cell Canisters, Cores of Calamity, and Life Alloy. So to deactivate my Zerg Potion, I just put the 30 Zerg Potions into my safe because things in your safe don't activate using Louis AFK. But if I have them in my inventory or in my piggy bank, it will basically take the effect permanently if I have over 30. It's an expensive way to never have to buy a Zerg potion again, 
and to be able to toggle it really easily. The Wither Blossom Staff. And for those who've seen the previous episodes, you know I like the Blossom Staffs. I've used pretty much every single one of them. And then we need to craft this. This is the summon for the Plaguebringer Goliath. It's the Abomination. And it is not consumable, thankfully, as all the boss summons have become. Ooh, that's cool. Dang, we're doing a lot of damage. The Plaguebringer might enrage at the surface, but I'm not 100% sure about that. We'll just have to give it a try. So let's do this. This boss is so tricky. Oh man, I hope we can do well. Oh, we're doing lots of damage though. This is great. There's so many projectiles and the rain doesn't help either. It's kind of hard to see. Wow, we're really doing some serious damage. I ran right into the boss, but if we can land our dodges, we should be good. Uh-oh. We can even use one of these staffs to do some extra damage. And we're already to 35%. This is incredible. We're actually doing well. We died, but we died at 28%. And I think our damage is there. We just need to get our dodges tightened up a little bit. Okay, let's do this. The rain stopped, so we should have a better time seeing projectiles. Shoot some of these out. Doing so much damage, this is amazing. Oh, taking damage now. Ooh, scary. Getting a little lag. Okay, already to the next phase. My goodness. Amazing. We've become powerful, finally. I remember on some of my other playthroughs, this has been like such an incredibly hard boss, but we're getting it so quickly right here. I mean, even if we're not going to beat him this time, which I think we actually have a good chance to, we're still doing really good. Dodge that one, dodge that one, and... I can't believe it. Did they nerf this guy or something? Or we just might be at a very nice point in the summoner progression where we just have crazy good weapons. That was the easiest Plaguebringer Goliath fight I've ever done. I usually struggle so much on that boss. And then we have the infected armor plating that'll give us some good stuff. Oh, the syringe, I remember that weapon. I still can't believe it. I was really preparing myself to be fighting the Plaguebringer for a while. Oh, interesting. There's an Ancient Manipulator upgrade to the Blackhawk Remote and the Infected Remote and the Fuel Bundle. Cool. So let's just go ahead and buy two of these bags and see what we get. I'll just sold a few more things to see if we can get it. Oh, there we go. We got it. <laughs> Sweet. Um, it's the Infected Remote. So let's try using this thing. Oh my goodness. It summons like a mech goliath, consumes all remaining minion slots, must be used from the hotbar, increases power based on minion slots used. I mean, it's doing pretty good damage. It's pretty comparable to some of the other stuff we've got. So now we need to craft the B armor because the plague armor is actually the upgrade to the B armor. So it looks like for the other parts, we need to do some alchemical flasks. And um, let's just do a third just, just to have it. And then we need flower boots, which I think this NPC down here, the Tinkerer, sells flower boots. Perfect. And there we go. We can do the Plaguebringer armor. With Hydrothermic, we got 80 defense, and this staff right here has 88 summon damage. 
when we switch over, we lose eight defense and we also lose some summon damage. The set bonus is plus three max minions. So that's more than our other one. So that should bump our DPS a little bit. And then we get a plague dash. And then we have a little plague bringer to protect us and empower nearby minions. So I think here's the real test. What's gonna be the damage with all of our stuff active at the same time? 4,000. And now let's switch over to this. Make sure we've got all of our summons. Looks like we're doing a lot more damage with the hydrothermic armor. I might stick with that one. And now I really wanna get that special psycho knife because I think that will really increase our DPS. So let's go ahead and run one of these. In fact, I'm gonna put some Zerg on right now so we can get some extra quick farming. And we can even place one of these down and start throwing some of these out. Just absolutely demolishing this event. Oh, I think we already got a Psycho Knife. There we go. Psycho Knife, and I think that's pretty much all we need. Maybe I'll leave this going for just a little bit longer, see what else we get. Moonstone, another nice one. And we just absolutely demolished that Mothron right there. This makes me so happy. <laughs> I was worried that Silas was going to be weak. But now, Silas is a beast. Taking down Plaguebringer super fast. Doing more DPS than I think some of my other characters are doing at this point in the game. I really like the Zerg Potion. I'd forgotten how nice Zerg Potions are. Because they make just the right amount of enemies to be really fun and really rewarding. But it's not like the uh, crazy Ultimate Battler. I feel like I may stop using the Ultimate Battler, except for maybe situations where I need to just kill an insane amount of enemies. So this is what we're looking for right here. Oh, interesting. So it's a little bit of a range to it. So you just run up, stab them real quick, and it debuffs them. That's cool. Well, I think it's time to find a Martian Saucer. We'll probably need to deactivate all of our summons for that and take off our set bonus. And then we can go ahead and start up the Martian invasion. So I just teleported back to base and we've got Martians everywhere. I have a feeling this is actually gonna be a really easy event for us to clear. We're doing just so much damage at this point in the game. And I think the Martian saucers are gonna be real simple since all of this stuff homes in so well. Really the hard thing about Martian saucers is um, managing to do all of your dodges and still land all of your hits. Okay, we've got our first Martian Saucer. It's gonna be easy. Oh, we can even do this staff right there. And then shoot these out. All sorts of extra damage. Oh my gosh, we are destroying this thing. <laughs> and on our first one, we got our Xeno Staff. I don't know if this is going to be better than what we got, though. Xeno seems like a step down from this Plague Staff. Wow, we are going to be done with this in no time. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm loving the power we're getting as a summoner now. This is definitely the strongest I think I've been at this point in the game. Just making these guys look completely weak. And we got the anti-gravity hook. Pretty cool. Look at that, 5,000 damage per second. And the saucers move so slowly that it's really easy to land all your hits with these summons. Oh, we got another Xeno staff, nice. We're already 76% done with this invasion. This is insane. And three Xeno staffs. This is so fun. Sometimes these invasions, when I film them, take like, you know, 30 minutes to do just because it takes so long fighting, you know, 10 Martian saucers or something. But then I usually edit it down quite a bit to be 
a lot shorter. Oh, Cosmic Car Key. That's actually quite nice. We really haven't used our mount that much in this. I guess we use it when we're fighting bosses to evade, mainly during the Calamitous fight. Oops, took some hits there, but we finished the event. And let's go ahead and pull all of our loot in, see what we got. Got a whole bunch of the Wingman. It's a magic weapon though, so we don't need that. Um, we'll keep the anti-gravity hook. Shock grenades, I wonder... Looks like those just go for rogue stuff, so we don't need it. And just to confirm what I was thinking, I've got the Xeno Staff rolled to Ruthless. We're going to summon as many of these as we can, and let's see how it does. So it's doing 3,000. It's landing the hits really well, but I don't know, it's very similar to our B. So I had turned off weapons out for a lot of this playthrough, and I just turned it back on, and this knife looks so cool. Another thing that we can craft now that we've defeated the golem is the death whistle. And this summons the Ravager. I'm pretty excited to fight this guy. Um, I think that's going to be a fight for the next episode. We'll probably use this arena right here. But I think this is a good place to end it. We've got lots of good stuff coming up next episode, though. We've got the Ravager, probably Duke Fish Run. I don't really like Duke Fish Run in death mode. He can be a bit tricky, but we'll give that a try. I think there was also an item from Calamitous that I didn't get. So I want to go back and get that and then we'll be ready to go for Ravager. And we're getting so close to the Moon Lord. It's gonna be super fun to do post Moon Lord content as a summoner. There's a lot of really cool weapons. So if you guys are enjoying this series, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.